All right, we made it to our last example. We're going to interpret a polynomial model. In science class, Abby mixes a fixed amount of baking soda with different amounts of vinegar in the bottle capped by a balloon. She records the amount of time it takes the gases produced by the reaction to inflate the balloon. So here she's got her mixture. She's putting a balloon on and timing to see how long does it take for that balloon to inflate. From her data, Abby created a function to model the situation. For x quarter cups of vinegar, it takes this many <laughs> seconds to inflate the balloon. So part A, how long would it take to inflate the balloon with five quarter cups of vinegar? All right, so we're going to use graphing technology to sketch this graph. All right, there it is, graphing technology. We got kind of this funny looking graph. Um, some things to note that the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis is at about 13.2. The x-intercept is at about 6.6. .6. Um, so what is the value of the function when x equals 5? So let's get a closer look, if we can. <laughs> it gets a little blurrier as we get closer. When x equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm just going to sketch a line straight up, one, two, three, four, five, to the function. And where it hits the function, that's my estimate on the value when x equals 5. Now I would sketch straight across to see what the y value is or the value of the function. And I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. A little less than 6.5, so I'll estimate that to be 6.3. So when our x was equal to 5, the value of the function uh, t of x, which is our y's, was equal to about 6.3. So it will take about 6.3, so about 6.3 seconds to inflate if Abby uses five of those quarter cups of vinegar. All right, so we have a follow-up question. What do the x and y intercepts of the graph mean in this context? Do those values make sense? So we highlighted those before. Let's actually write them down now. The x-intercept is about equal to, I think I did some rounding, 6.6. .6. So that ordered pair would be 6.6 .6, comma zero. What we want to remember is that the x value is representing the number of those quarter cups. And the zero is the number of seconds it takes to inflate the balloon. All right, so we're saying, according to this, if 6.6 .6 quarter cups of the vinegar is used, the balloon will inflate in zero seconds. That seems kind of weird. All right, how about our y-intercept? Now the y-intercept we said was, we rounded it to, it's about 13.2. So that ordered pair, the x is a zero, the y is a 13.2. So in this case, we're saying if we add in zero quarter cups of vinegar, the balloon will inflate in 13.2 seconds. So neither of these really make sense in the context of this problem. Even though mathematically, we can talk about what that means, in the context, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So therefore, what we would have to do, it's right in the sentence here, Therefore, we must limit the domain and range when considering this model. So limiting the domain and the range, what that means is, you know, maybe our domain doesn't go from zero all the way to 6.6. .6. Maybe it has a smaller interval within that where 
those values would make sense in the context of this problem. Maybe the range doesn't go from zero all the way up to 13.2. Maybe there's a smaller interval within that where um, this function would make sense in the context of this problem. <laughs>